it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. like a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. My name is Banele Pony, and I work for Street Talk as a cameraman. Um, yeah, Sindisa. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sindisa Monakali. I serve as the deputy chair of Africa Education. Um, I'm also a student. Um, I live in Kailicha. My name is Bayanda Mazwindumiso. I stay in Kailicha. I work as a curriculum developer for Equal Education. Yeah. Um, hi everyone, my name is Yasan <coughs> Avilapati. I'm a facilitator at Equal Education. I'm also a student. Hello um, everyone, my name is Aaron Chowabi from um, Lower Crossroads in Philippi. I'm an artist, man. I'm a landscape facilitator, I'm a radio presenter. I also I do a contemporary dance. Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Kolo I'm a professional actor and an entertainer. And I have a um, non-profit organization and I work full-time for the head of the Education. Let me just open up by saying that um, as we are facing with this pandemic, um, coronavirus, and the, it came as a, as a thief in our lives. So it, um, we, it's difficult for us to move on. It's difficult for us to work. It's difficult for us also to get some groceries because we have to um, um, go to crowded places and we have to protect ourselves. So uh, it's difficult even financially. But I want to know from you guys, um, we have friends, we have families, and we can't see those friends, we can't see the families, and even at schools, um, yeah. So I just want to hear from you guys and how, do, um, how is this uh, virus affecting you personally, like your life personally? It's really difficult to, to operate. Like, um, and we know that we were people who are used to who, who contribute or who, who fight for quality and equal education in our lifetime. So we are used to these mass gatherings, to, to be in meetings. So all of these things have to be moved online. You know? So you can't communicate with everyone. Um, and also us being students, we use public transport to go to school. We are used to be in lecture rooms, you are used to do tutorials with a group of people, but now they are just depositing a material online to, for you to study alone um, at home. So we're not really, we're not really being educated, you know, because you 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 tend to submit, do submissions, learn learn at home, and it's difficult for us to learn at home because you know that being living in township or living in a formal segment, yeah, uh, in, in Kailicha. With the, with the with the number with the with people in the family that is more than seven, there's no room to study. There's so to to have those things, and it's even affecting those people who are homeless. Um, and us being people who are used to to go on the ground and help people. Um, we I participated in a community action network, um, that is called Kaili Chaken, and our first task was to make sure that people of Mpolweni in Makaza are not unfairly evicted in their homes and we had to become essential workers we have to, to have permits to travel to meetings to gatherings to, to towns and it, it was unfair and you know Mbalesazela is an activist to see people sleeping outside in the rain um, next to a sea and all of those kind of things so it also exposed the inequalities in the work that government is not doing good for people especially those who are coming from black and working class background so it was extra job for us and this thing is treated like there's there are no other alternative more than the lockdown itself. And South Africa being the most unequal country in the, in the world, you, you, you can see with domestic violence, you can see with all of those kind of things. So it's, it's, it's really affecting um, mostly the poor. And personally, it's affecting me when it comes to school. When it, because we are not used to these online meetings and stuff. We are used to, to, to engage face to face. So we have to use the to, to rework the modeling of organizing shorter plan. Yeah, Bayanda, can you please tell us, ne, um, just to elaborate more, um, how is this virus affecting you, your life personally? Um, so my, my my life has changed completely. From uh, I have two parents that work in the hospitality industry, and they immediately when 
restaurants and, and bakeries and, and where they work was shut down. I had to take the responsibility then to look after my family and my siblings. Already, I am the only one working at home um, during these three months. So I have to take care of them. That is a, like a financial burden on its own. Um, um, and, and having them to work at home um, with so many people around the house and I have to work and I have to, to, to be in meetings and, um, and so on. It's very difficult. Um, it, coronavirus is not, is not for poor working class families at all. It is absolutely, um, it, is, it, is, it is, it is, we in overcrowded spaces, we have siblings, we, have, we stay with people. You can't self-quarantine and we don't know what's the meaning of, of, of self-quarantining at this, at, at this point because you, you are seven and above as, as part of your family. So that's why I'm, I'm saying that it's, for me, it, it's not for the poor working class families that have to be at home more than seven um, and share that space. So for me, it has changed financially. My life has changed financially. My, my space has changed. Um, the, my working uh, ethic and, and, and the way I work has changed. Um, now, we, we, as Osindisa has said, we, we went from being visible to the community to being virtual and working online. And some of us feel like we're really not doing something um, that great by doing that. So organizing online is difficult. Working online is difficult, and also studying online is is another is, is is another life. And still, if you think about all of that, it is not pro poor people that constantly don't have data, don't have access to Wi-Fi, they don't, um, you know, they don't have all of these things. Thank you, Bayanda. Um, Aaron. Um, so this coronavirus has really affected me, man, like in a, in a very huge way. Um, on the other side, it's a, it's a good thing, right? Um, because it gave me enough time to actually spend uh, time with my family, you know, with my, uh, my siblings, because we're very bu- I'm very busy, though. You know, at night, I don't sleep. I'm always doing paperwork. I wanna, during the day, I'm working um, physically. So I don't really have enough time to spend with my family, right? Um, but before you lock down, yeah, when I... But now, since the lockdown, you are spending time with the family and, and, and trying to discover myself and trying to reflect on what I really want to do with my life. Um, very important because I don't really do India, reflect and meditate and, and all of that. Yeah, when I, uh, but on the other side, once again, umbani, we are colors of because we are all goddamn day and clean. We are going to peg our feet to see a peg, all the goddamn time. We are going to peg. We are going to peg. We are going to peg. So, umbanya kalozupela akoma lingela yo walumbanya tini e kalozupela yabona. Um, yeah, so it affected me cool because I'm the person who works with abandon of your school. Now that there is no children, um, about about your school in that is there is no work for me. Yabona ke ukumbu le ngumbeteli yenzi now where is the money to buy umbanya? Where is the money to do? I mean to pay a rent and all of that. Yabo. So it's really really affecting me yeah one again so that is why you know we have to try i had i've tried to actually adapt to into a call you again if i have to go online and try to do money in mali online then i have to adapt to london call you yeah so so yeah thank you very much uh, Ron. um see sanga Personally, how is coronavirus affecting me? Firstly, as an activist, I find it very frustrating because as Bayan and Sinisa mentioned earlier on, that South Africa is one of the most unequal countries and then the inequalities are just um, showing themselves. They're just they even It's becoming even more highlighted now during this pandemic because I mean like... Um, as a person that is always advocating for change in education and not only that, but for everyone to live like in a society where there's equality and all of that, the, and the, the inequalities are now becoming more highlighted and it's becoming more frustrated for me as an activist and most of all when there's nothing that I can really do about it. I mean, and how is it also affecting me? Because as a student, number one, the environment is not really conducive for learning, especially as a girl child, because I have um, house duties that I have to attend to. Um, and then I cannot refuse to my parents and be like, because my parents are at work, first of all, that's one thing that I keep, to keep in mind. And me also, being a girl child and the first one in the house, I need to do those duties and be the deputy parents because my parents are not around. Um, 
facing connectivity issues also besides that and it's day four already of um for me online learning that it has resumed it's it's also so frustrating when it's all cons it's, it's also a battle on its own that i also have to fight because i don't um it, it's we're not used to working online and all of that so these connectivity issues there are certain things that i don't have like for example my textbooks some of them they're not even here so i don't even know where to print because to sit in a laptop the whole day it's tiring i must tell you because at the end of the day your eyes are paining and all of that um so and also i was working in philippi can um i'm donating i'm helping the, um, people in around philippi and um philippi east um, also, as an activist, again, I'll say it was frustrating because seeing people there, people are so hungry during this time. And then when you're giving out food puzzles, some people that you could see that they really need it so badly. Someone will be thanking you more than two times or even more than five times. Your in course, this is your own immunity. And then that, to me, like in Visa Rabshun, as a black person, that our people are suffering so much that even when you give them J plastic nyana, they become so grateful and then they're thanking you so much as if like you've done the biggest thing in the world. Um, so that, that's how lockdown has been for me. It's really frustrating and you can't even organize um, under lockdown because I mean like you cannot be able to reach everyone because there are things that are happening that I feel like as an activist that are so wrong during this lockdown but at the same time as I said again there's nothing that I can really do about it because you can't even organize under this lockdown. Tando. For me the lockdown has affected me especially as an activist because there is no opportunity now there is nothing of opportunity agents are saying nothing because there is nothing in the industry at the moment. And secondly, as someone who used to work with children, it's bad because sometimes we are the hope to choose these children because sometimes at home they don't have anyone to talk to, right? And then they are being abused at home. Just imagine if there is no one who's going to motivate them and they are teaching those people that who are abused at home, what's going to happen? You understand? So for me, it has affected me very badly. And um, so I, I wish there was something I can do, but unfortunately, I can't be able to meet up with those people because sometimes I have to be during this lockdown. So that is how the lockdown has affected me because I used to have children that didn't have anyone to talk to and I used to I used to get events where I go and say phone, but now there is nothing. So just go to the phone, that is how it affects me. My my dream is um to see South Africa in, in solidarity and working together. That's my dream. So my dream is is to see um, a liberated youth, a liberated generation that is conscious and aware of their surroundings, and actually who are working towards liberating others and actually being being more conscious about what's happening around them. My dream um, is to see South Africa being led by youth and the people of the working class organizing and overthrowing capitalism. Uh, my dream is to run a youth center, man, you know, to empower, inspire, and also to give a band to special Lucha and a skill to, to discover themselves. My dream is to see all those people that are becoming successful people and becoming entrepreneurs. That is my dream. To see all those people that look so hopeless being my dream is to see a decolonized South Africa. Yazi, you should ever sit and talk with people, or else take a walk and create this straight talk. Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger. Listen what is right and say what is wrong. You should ever sit and talk with people, or else take a walk and create this straight talk. Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger. Listen what is right and say what is wrong.